uh, although in basketball, I'm, I'm way more so, but basketball was really the sport I loved the most. Are you like super competitive in basketball? Yeah. Are you that guy? No. Can you like not play I, without being aggressive? I, uh, I don't need to win at all costs, but I'm going to try to win. I want our team to be trying to win. Yeah. And so I hate, I don't, I'm not hate so strong word, but I don't like to go just to go jack around. Like we're going to, I want to have two good, even teams and we're going to try to win. Yeah. And then, but I don't get, you don't get like frustrated ass. and stuff. Yeah. There's some no. guys that they can't, oh, yeah. they can't even play, you know, if they're. No, not, I'm not like that. Win. Yeah. But I want to, I want to like, I want to make it a good competitive. Yeah. Like, you know, does that make not, sense? Well, you're not, you're just not into like completely dominating. Like you, you want good competition, right? Yeah, I would want a good competition. Game. And now we just want, you know, us to try to win. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> like, <laughs> like we're not going to not try to win. Yeah. We're going to try to win. But I could, like, I'm not going to be like, hold on a second. My family just got here. So to make sure they don't come in here. You good? Hey, Nate. Uh, Yo, I'm doing a podcast interview, so I don't come in there, okay? I'm doing a podcast, so you don't come in there. All right. Maybe this is part of it. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry about that. But, I'd rather be walking around. Sorry. So I want to – yeah, I'm just the kind of person that wants to, like, have – let's have two good competitive teams and let's, let's play and we're going to try to win. Are you a leader in that aspect? Like, would you be the guy that's, like, rounding up the team and, like, hooping about it? Or do you kind of, like, just do your best? Uh, are, you, I, are you the team I, captain kind of guy? You know what I mean? I was thinking about this the other day because um, I've taken a couple different – it came up because I was ta I've taken a couple different personality profile stuff lately, yeah. and there's one called – the predictive index and there's one called disc D I S C. Yeah. I've heard about that. And I think the best way I would describe it is I don't feel the need to be the leader, but I absolutely will be the leader if there no one else is Makes sense. Yeah, because I feel like it's important. Yeah. And so it's like, if somebody else is team captain, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Or I will be that if I can't stand when there's no one sort of in charge. Yeah. And so I don't mind being in charge at all, but I don't have to be. Yeah, I feel like that's um, – my wife actually gave a word one time to some ladies about that, about not being – they're more than just hole fillers, you know? Like I think there's a lot of people that do that. that they're not necessarily like outgoing leaders, but they'll just fill the gaps or fill the holes wherever it's needed. And I think it's – that's good and noble, but I wonder if, like, I don't know, there's almost more value sometimes in somebody taking the reins, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not because they have to, but because they're, they're actually passionate about leading. Yeah, it depends <laughs> what it is. Yeah, for sure. If it's, ba if it's basketball, I'm like, I yeah, you know. Yeah. It depends but, what it is. So you're, like, very easily into false humility? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't need to be, with you, but <laughs> I will, <laughs> I can. I'd rather, I'd rather control the leader. <laughs> I'm definitely good enough to lead. If you know what I mean. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think probably the honest truth is, is like, I like to be in charge, but I don't need to be all the time. I don't know if that makes sense. Are you sure that's, that's true though? No. If you like to be in charge, are you sure that you don't need to be? How would, feel you, like how would you know that you don't need to be, I guess? If the leader's doing a good job. <laughs> it's like, according to your standards? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, that's yeah. True. Yeah, that's funny. If I'm being super honest. Yeah. Like, they're doing a great job. Like, I don't need, you know, I love this. They're, they're killing it. I wouldn't well, add I like anything to that. Yeah. 
<laughs> it depends what it is. It yeah. depends what it is. Uh, it, yeah, it depends what it is. I, I just appreciate leaders that are open to feedback and, you know. Yeah, it's important. But it depends what it is. Like Jude's game the other night. It was like, it was so hard. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I could see how this could really eat you up. Like, what are these guys? These coaches, like, who's calling the plays? I mean, I, I'm, I'm getting wrapped up in a middle school game. Uh, I've always heard that. I've had that. Some, I've had some coach friends that say that's the hardest part of the job, man, is dealing with those parents. Like, that's almost a yeah. Game. And I've been a coach. It's almost a game strategy, like in itself. You know, of like, okay, if I play this kid this week, I'm gonna have to deal with his parents. You know, <laughs> if we call these kind of plays. That parent's going to be upset. Yeah, it's it's pretty gross. Oh, and I've been a coach, and so I know that, and I would never, ever say anything. Yeah. But it was so funny because it was rising up in me in yeah. the stands. Yeah. And I want like, and I was like, oh, I just identified it. I was like, oh, I see how that could be. This is how this happens. I think a lot of that in you, I think you're – I do think you're a guy that, like – I think you try to see the best in people. You try to find their gifts and their talents. <clears throat> and I do think you you want to see them running in their their strength, I think, a lot of times. You know, I've done yeah. I've done some church ministry with you. I've done some different things with you, but I think that's one thing that I've always valued with you is you're not you do you truly do want to see people doing what they're good at, you know? And not mm-hmm. just and not just being a fixture in something but like or even trying new things or like yeah maybe stepping into something that they don't think they'd be good at or their people are afraid to try or but you must see it though you you must see the the ability that they might have right even if they're sure that's a pretty good strength to have i would think as a leader as a leader who doesn't want to lead I don't need it's not, it's not a half need to. to. There you go. That's right. You want to. You don't need to. That's good. Yeah. But maybe that's not true. So we've had some we've had some good, I think, really good conversations the last week or so. This is so this is my last episode of the podcast for, for this year. So <laughs> let's let's oh, take let's, let's take this thing down in flames. Let's try yeah. to do it. Let's do it. We, We've had some good conversations, I think, that it always, in my opinion, it always seems to come back to relationships somehow. Like, that's always kind of like the, the common theme about the importance of healthy relationships. I think with everything, you know, we've, we've talked about marriage, we've talked about sex, we've talked about racism, we've talked about church, and I think the common theme there is just like relationships. And I think it's something that I've, I've struggled with probably most of my life is like maintaining healthy relationships. And mm-hmm. a lot of the reason that's been such a struggle is because I've been in, I've either been in or I've desired to be in a ministry of some type, church ministry, uh, leadership ministry, team ministry, whatever that is. And that was always like the focal point for me. And so talking about relationships, the only thing that made sense was in regards to church ministry or that kind of ministry. And so every other relationship got put on kind of the side because it didn't line up with my goal of ministry. And so I feel like I I really have lost a lot of uh, what had the potential to be really good friendships even because I was so focused on, on that. But I think you're you're the guy that really values relationships as well. What's your we we attempted this we we've started I don't know if we're gonna keep it going or what but this uh, morning Zoom call this morning phone mm-hmm. call with, with 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 some guys and the whole point of it I think was just kind of a, a place an outlet to just kind of be real you know and we've talked about being real too and what that means but. Um, I think it was something that you wanted, right? I think it's something that you felt like you needed was yeah. an outlet to kind of start your day off with 
some intentionality with that. Yeah. And yeah. it's been really good for me. It's been really healthy for me to have that because I've mm-hmm. noticed, I've noticed a change in myself now that I've stepped out of church ministry. Um, and I just, I kind of hinted to like some of the friendships and relationships that I've, I've truly lost. Like they're, they're truly just not there because I was mm-hmm. so focused on church and we had a, we had a call a couple days ago and it was, it was after a call where I, I was pretty vocal and talking a lot. And I tend to do that when I'm, I don't, I don't know when I do that necessarily, but I do, I talk a lot sometimes and take over calls and you called me after the call and left me a, a sweet message, voice message saying that I think you used the words I was in my sweet spot. I think that's what you said. And it really, it really got me thinking as to why uh, I truly believe that I'm good at speaking wisdom to people and, and encouragement, really encouraging people to like seek for more or um, dig deeper in themselves or whatever. Mm-hmm. And after you sent me that message, it, it made me kind of, well, how is that different than what I've been doing? And so I was kind of in my head, like trying to evaluate why you recognized me being in my sweet spot. And I agreed with you. Like I, I felt like, yeah, that's a good place mm-hmm. for me. I'm good at this. I, I enjoy this actually talking to people about just being real with people. And <laughs> It made, me, it made me look back and realize how crappy I was or how, how crappy I had gotten at doing that over the last couple of years because mm-hmm. I was so focused on, on church and on church ministry. Mm. So, it, so then it got me thinking, why? Why did I suck so bad at that for a while? Because I feel like that was something that I, I grew a lot um, – four or five years ago when I, when I did that, when I did that well, when I like intentionally listened to people and didn't have some motive or didn't have some ulterior, you know, (laughs) plan to Mm -hmm. grow in a platform or get more listeners or get more. Well, let's, let's set the context a little bit. We were on one of our other guy we know is going through a hard time right now. And you, we were on this call together and I just saw you, you just kept, I just saw you give him a ton of wisdom, encouragement, not really advice, but just encouragement and truth. And that was, it was like, it wasn't like step, uh, walking on eggshells, but it also wasn't harsh. It wasn't like, Hey, you need to do this. You just were sort of like, I actually don't have a lot of answers for you, but I do know one thing to be true is that you can have peace this time. And, yeah. and I, and I was just so blessed because uh, I, I got to see you minister, yeah. be in ministry, <laughs> yeah. but it just seemed so pure. It didn't seem like you were trying. It didn't seem like you, there was no, that just wasn't your job. You weren't the, uh, you know, relations pastor or like the count counselor <laughs> pastor yeah. and hope to see you again next week yeah. and uh and i'm wondering i wanted to ask you maybe and i think you maybe alluded to it but do you feel like your even your ministry and your your quote-unquote advice or counsel has changed over the last few months or year yeah i definitely think it has and I don't know that it's, I think it's gone back. I think it's gone back to what, because when, when you and I first met, I, I had this real spiritual awakening about freedom and about the kingdom of mm-hmm. God and what it was. And then it kind of got taint, tainted and tarnished, I think, through uh, the idea of having a platform and through the idea of, of church ministry. And that's one thing I responded back to your to your voice message with, the Lord was really showing me where, where that went wrong. And I think I came to the, I came to a point where 
being intentional with someone and listening to them and ministering to their heart wasn't good enough for me. It wasn't, Mm -hmm. that wasn't a big enough platform and it wasn't, it wasn't something that could be a thriving ministry, you know, quote unquote. And you couldn't monetize it. You couldn't couldn't monetize it. That would never support That wouldn't look so good. And I, I wouldn't be able to pay the bills that way because I had this, I wanted to quit my job and I wanted to be in ministry. And what that looks like is I got to, I got to either start a church, find a church or yeah. get around Not a lot people, of options, get around yeah. people that are going to pay my bills for me. Right. And so that didn't seem like, that didn't seem like a ministry that was going to pay the bills. Yeah. All right. And I, that was like an honest moment where I, I, dude, I couldn't have said this like a few months ago. Like I, I wouldn't have been able to even, go into my heart to a place to pull that out. Like the Lord's brought me into this place of freedom where I can honestly look back and think that was a problem. That was the issue. That's where you went wrong. You know, and I, I can say I went wrong. I went wrong in the place of ministering to someone's heart and giving them face to face time or ear to ear time wasn't, Mm. wasn't enough, you know? And was that, so was it fulfilling? Which part? The, this 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 recent this one here yes very much. yeah was that yeah. fulfilling to no you know if it wasn't for us talking about it right now no one would have known about it no one will know about it yeah you know just yeah. you yeah just him just me yeah uh and that's my design right now is to just get that word out there and let everybody know that i'm back <laughs> <laughs> but was it i mean did it bless did it did it just that simple it did, and I'll, I'll say this too in an honest way, you, you seeing it and letting me know that it blessed you was a blessing. Like, mm-hmm. Sure. And I, ne- I didn't get that very often from preaching a message or from doing whatever I was doing in the church. I actually got the opposite. Like, and I, I think of that that Bible verse of like what you do in private, the Lord will bless in public. Right. And I think a lot of times we try to do all these public displays or public things or preach a perfect Mm. message or whatever. And we don't get people saying that was a great job. (laughs) And so we didn't do good enough. And so we have to try to do more, you know, and it's backwards. Like (laughs) The private stuff is what the Lord is looking for. I think. Yeah. You know, yeah, and yeah. that's the stuff that he's. So you calling me up and leaving that voicemail was was my blessing. That was the blessing to me of like, and I didn't even. I wasn't in the middle of it. I wasn't like, man, Josh is going to call me after this. This was so good. Like, <laughs> Josh, Josh is going to let me know how how much he was blessed. No, for oh sure. no, like you that wasn't even on the radar. That. But there has been times when I'm given a message where I'm expecting oh. somebody to say something. You know. I'm expecting somebody to say how how good I did because I prepared for it, right? I I studied for it. I I spent a whole week preparing my message and somebody better recognize it. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's that, I think that's what we're talking about, about relationships in in regards to ministry, I think. And I would would tend to probably tell you, you probably did get a lot of good jobs. Uh, hey man, that was awesome, and probably just from three or four. But you you don't focus on that at all. You, right. You're gonna you're gonna hone in on the one negative. This is what we all do. Oh yeah, for sure. You could have fifty man awesome sermons, and the one or the two. Yeah. Hey, I didn't really agree with this, and you know. Yeah. Or maybe two or two or three key people didn't say anything. Yeah. or i think the the preaching is a great place for people to give fake praise to like it's super easy to go up to the preacher after the service and say man that was a great job you know what i mean and not and not have even enjoyed it liked it got anything from it it was just it's it's easy to go after the guy that put himself up there yeah and and give him fake and not not even not, not even bad intentions. Not bad, but that's just what, like... But, like, yeah, polite. You, yeah, you could receive 50 of those that really wasn't that impactful for them at all. But they... It's almost like what you do. It's, it's routine to, like, tell the, the speaker or the preacher, great job, right? 
And there's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing wrong with that, but there's the ones that are sincere and the ones that actually mean something are the ones in those private moments when you can really tell that somebody was blessed by something that, that, yes. that came through you, you know? Yes. And so I guess my question would be, why don't we, why is that not good enough? <laughs> you know, why is yeah. that, why is that not good enough in our lives to even go after? Man, I want to do that more often, you know? Exactly. I want to do that is. on a bigger scale, which means more often. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's a, uh, it's a big reason we started. It's, it's a big reason we started our, this ministry that safe time is yeah. because we are just sort of like, what would it look like if we were able to like use the internet, like in calendars and social media to like, and zoom calls to intentionally do this one on this kind of like one-on-one -on -one simple encouragement counsel feedback love Excellent. yeah it's just it's very simple and we just find it so fulfilling i don't know how big it'll ever be i don't you know like yeah. one person at a time how, you know like come on you're you know, like you're fielding what three three or four calls a day though right uh, we're fielding, um, well, we go through different seasons. Right now we're fielding about, just because of our calendar and our family life, we're doing about six, we do two two a day for four days a week. So it's. Yeah. And you uh, could do more, right? I mean, not, not you guys, but there's enough people that would fill up. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, are, they all get filled up. So we're, so we're making our time available two a day for so about seven or eight a week yeah uh so they all get no it's you know absolutely we could do more from the yeah. demand side yeah um but we're trying to and we've always set this up to where we could balance this and and we don't have to have a min you don't have to have a ministry like this to do this but right this is boundaries that you should probably have in your life you don't need to give away at the expense of your wife, your kids, your job that you need to do good at. You need, you need, we need to be doing good at our jobs, like our actual careers. Yeah. And you can get sucked in to, there's always going to be somebody to minister to. We can be sucked uh, into doing good, right? <laughs> like that's not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not like we're the answer to it's everyone. Contagious. Yeah. We're not the answer to everyone's things, but I'm just saying there's always, there will always be someone to, to, to do that with. And so we're just, we just ask, you know, we just sort of look at our lives, look at our calendar. Hey, what, what do we have the capacity to do this week? And that, so, so we sort of had it set up that way. I liked, I loved the, I wrote that down right when you left me that voicemail about finding your sweet spot. Cause I think, mm -hmm. and, and, and what I wrote down was find your sweet spot and stay there is what I wrote down. Because mm -hmm. I knew, I knew that that was something that the Lord was uh, growing me in, was prophetically speaking into people's lives, which means you have to be intentional. You have to be there. You have to be present. And I was mm -hmm. good at like calling people into their identity and like pulling that out of them, even if they didn't see it themselves and just very encouraging, supernatural encouragement. And Again, I, I left that place because it wasn't good enough. It wasn't big enough. And I, I think it's important for people to like find their sweet spot and stay there. Like it's okay that you don't have 22,000 Instagram followers. You know, it's okay that you don't have a church of 200 people that you're ministering to every Sunday morning. Like, mm -hmm. Find what you're, find where, where you're effective in life and, and stay there. You might be really good at making money. <laughs> you, know, you might be really good at encouraging your friend to be a better husband. And you might have great tips for men that come, you know, if you, if you have good advice for someone, chances are that's going to spread to somebody else. You know, yeah. go mm -hmm. to Josh, little John, call safe time. You know, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel like that's something that's important for people to like just find what they're good at? Because I think the church has done a good job at um, 
not recognizing people's true gifts and true talents, and they'll put them where they're needed in the church as opposed to uh, letting them thrive <laughs> in their in their strengths, you know? Yeah. You feel like that's important for, like, organizations or churches to do a better job of recognizing people's strengths, maybe, or helping them recognize their own strengths? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think the way I would – I think the way I think about it would be is, like, I just don't – I don't like to see people – discontent and striving to always feel like they need to be somewhere where they're not yeah. and so uh man if, if if you are an awesome business leader and i just hate to see people like think that they need to be doing more yeah or something different and i'm like no like be an awesome <laughs> business leader be an encourager to your employees be a great boss yeah. have a heart lead by your influence with your people at work and you know come to church don't come to church whatever that it's it's yeah it's this it's this whole i think that what rubs what i don't like is the feeling that there's people that feel like they're never doing enough in one way or the other and mm -hmm. so it's i just feel like it's just a it's a trap and it's it, it's, it's just it, it leads to discouragement and uh it's comparison it's like yeah you know and we all do it we like hey this guy's doing ministry i'm like well this guy's making a ton of money and like right. you know we yeah. all yeah. Uh, and not just making money but he's leading a business or generating wealth <laughs> for yeah other even yeah. yeah it's it's really just it's what are you what do you want to do do that is that and i feel like if you got if you're a born again believer who understands that you have the spirit of god li living inside of you the spirit of god living inside of you yeah. that trusting that the people you interact with every single day mm. uh, that is that is your sweet spot that is your lane trusting that you're being led by the holy spirit inside of you to in the way you talk encourage love give of yourself give of your resources extend mercy and grace to people and it's just you're in it that is that's the it's like could it be the that you're already in it could it be that you're in it yeah could it be that it will change could it be that it'll stay the same yes and yes yeah and being willing to to go being willing to stay being willing to really just understand and take steps of faith and hearing the voice of the lord that's inside of you all the time Good. I was listening to Joe Rogan the other day and he had this guest on and they were talking about the, they were kind of talking crap about the feminist movement <laughs> a little bit, but their, their point was why, why do we, why is it so necessary to encourage these, these young women to be something other than a mother or a wife? You know what I mean? Like, we, we can all agree that back in the 50s and all that was kind of, there was some gross misogyny for sure that went on with yeah. stay at home, cook and all that stuff. But it's a fact that, and this was jo Joe's point was, every single of the billions of people that have been on this planet came from a woman. <laughs> every <laughs> single one, like they birthed uh -huh. humanity. Every yeah. person on the face of the planet has been birthed cared for milk produced for every single person mm -hmm. that's a pretty important job you know like and on a, on a small scale just like speaking to the women that just just because you're a stay-at-home mom like that's that's amazing you know and i think that speaks to what you were saying about knowing where you're at like that's where you're at like you're Mm -hmm. this isn't just a, a woman's thing right now, but I'm just saying like so many, I think there's so, so many women that look at, you know, business, business women and how they're doing it and what they're doing and they're going for more and changing the culture for women. Just be like, what brings you joy? I, I've got a sister that her lifelong dream was to be a stay at home mom. Like that's what she always wanted to do was raise kids, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's so awesome like that's what's inside of you man like mm -hmm. let that out and it's okay to be there in that place and you might have to work a little bit 
to be able to have a life where you can enjoy that thing more, you know, or steward that more. You might have to have a full-time job and do the podcasting thing on the side. That might have to be the case, but mm. be it, you know, like mm -hmm. be, find your sweet spot. And you also said that I shined in that place. You said like, that's, yeah. that's, that's where you shine. Yeah. Find that place because you were like, you were made to shine. You were created to shine. Find that place. I think it's a, it, yeah. it, it's worthy. It's a worthy expedition to look for a place where you shine. Yeah. Um, and you be flow. Yeah. And and be okay if it's if it's off the stage or be okay if it's not with, you know, a thousand likes. You know, like mm -hmm. w where do you shine? And so, how important would it be to have someone like you who's willing to, you know share that with that person of like, man, that's where you shine. You know, it's, it's, it's so important. Yeah. And I'm no, I'm no one special, but if we all took the time out to recognize somebody else yeah. for something that they may not even see in themselves, like how important was that to you Yeah, to receive that? And how, how easily, how easy is that to do? Yeah. How easy is that to do to just to recognize, recognize when you see somebody else really shining really in their flow like wow yeah i just saw you do that and that was amazing i just wanted to let you know like it yeah. seemed like that you really were not trying i like to say like you were just flowing like you weren't trying you weren't striving yeah. you know this is the christian term striving but yeah. it's like it was just natural coming out of you like encouraging someone um what do you but think also not Go ahead. Not trying to fix them. Yeah. I, I was yeah. just also so impressed yeah. by your just like, uh, and that was just sort of mature <laughs> counsel. I think, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well. No, I know what you, you mean. Know, yeah. yeah. There was when no expectation lived, on the back end. Like when you've lived a little bit of life and you've seen a lot of people's problems and have had your own problems, you realize that things aren't so black and white and simple all the time. And sometimes the answer or the advice or the wisdom is just to go, man, we're here with you. This sucks. Mm -hmm. I do know that you can have peace in this. Uh, but it's almost, it, it's almost an insult to even have to, to step too much into their shoes and say, you need to do A, B, and C, and D. It's, it's just like, no, yeah. you have no idea. But you do. You are right. We can have peace. And there are some promises we can hold on to um yeah that's kind great. of just knowing 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 how far to go and not assuming that you actually do have these answers for sure yeah yeah or have it figured out or have learned it or oh yeah, yeah that's good no i think it's i think it's super important to be the kind of person that's willing to like not only recognize when someone's doing something well <laughs> but yes but go to them and say it i, I think a lot of times that doesn't happen because we think that it'd be a waste of time. Like that person knows they're good at that, or that person knows that that's, they probably heard it a thousand times. I, you know, I don't need to make mm -hmm. them cocky. I don't need to make them feel arrogant about themselves, but we have no idea if that person is like where I was like thinking, Oh, this isn't a very big deal that I'm doing this. No, it's a freaking huge deal that you found your lane and you're mm -hmm. good at it. And we should never be afraid to, tell someone that like mm -hmm. dude i recognized your goodness <laughs> you mm -hmm. know i recognize like your sweet spot i recognize how much you're shining right now like that's never gonna hurt it's it's their job at that if they want to go run and be like crazy arrogant about that that's that's on them but i think if we miss that we could be missing the moment to help them recognize you don't need something more than this right here like this is <laughs> amazing what you're doing don't strive yeah. for more than this if the Lord gives you more, great, but don't strive for more than this because it's, it's effective, you know? Mm -hmm. It's good. There's a lot of guys that you talked about money. There's a lot of guys that just enjoy helping people make money. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm, I'm pretty amazed by <laughs> that kind of ability, and I'd love to be around that person for sure, you know? <laughs> where, um, yeah. Where are you at with church right now? Where are you at with have you have you are you done with church like for forever and always 
Oh, no. Why not? What do you mean by what do you mean by church? So that's a good question. What do you think I mean when I say that? <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean by church? Because we, oh. we all have different experiences with church of what that is. And this isn't a rag on church time. This is like my experience, your experience. I'm just curious because we met in church. Yeah. We met in a, a system of routine of going to church, you know? Right. I would say church. I would think of church. The word church means like a group of people that regularly, regularly gather to worship and declare the good news and remind each other of the gospel, remind each other that they've been forgiven, that set free, uh, and recognize like, um, Jesus as Lord. And, and it's a, it's a group of people that, yeah, really simply that come yeah. together in a local place and, and meet if that's what you mean. But yeah. So, so you are done with that? No, I'm not done with that. Did I say, did I say you that? No, I'm asking. I'm asking. <laughs> Is it a priority for you in your life right now to find that group of people that, it's, you, that you can do that with? Is it a priority? It used to be a priority for me. Yeah. I had to have that group of people. I, I needed to have that group of people. And I would, I would find it for segments of years. Yeah. And I would go on to a different group of people and do those things that you're talking about. And kind of at the end of that segment of years, kind of be unfulfilled in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, have to, and have to find a new one or have to find a different one. Um, for whatever reason, I mean, I, everybody needs what they need and wants what they want from a, a group of people or a relationship. Um, yeah. Cause you, you used to be on, on staff at some churches on staff at churches that were functioning uh, well. Is that yeah. something that you like, are you, where are you at right now with that? Oh, it's a great question. It's, it's confusing. I mean, I think we're, we're just sort of an in-between. I almost don't even like the premise that it's like an either or thing. Like I'm either in church or out of church because there's, uh, I don't, it's sort of like, I don't like that setup. I don't like that. It's like, it's it's not an either or thing for me. It's just, we are like for our personal family, me and Macy, the kids, we are gathering every, honestly, we're, almost every day we're gathering gathering around the table we're talking about the lord we're sharing a meal and we're having communion with each other mm-hmm. and uh then weekly uh we're doing something like more intentional worship in our living room and um talking about god and 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 we're actually going through nacy's book and hearing for practicing hearing from the holy spirit and we're doing that with our family yeah. So I call that like my inner, inner circle, like just my immediate family in our home. And then, and then I have a, a little bit of an outer circle of really deep friendships who um, I talk to on a regular basis. You're one of them. I have maybe three or four or five other guys, you know, three or four other guys that I meet with, talk to with regularly. And we, we uh, share each other's lives. Like what's going on in your life? How's your family? Like, and it's not surface stuff. It's, it's just like, I really care about these people and their families and we pray for them and they pray for us. And we know that if, uh, if uh, times got tough that we'd be there for one another and help however we can, if there was ever any, sickness or lack or you know like the body would come together and fulfill each other's you know so yeah and so and that and and you consider that church right yeah i mean even that definition i mean is that definition that important to me right now i I would say that's probably the i'm just talking this i don't have this all fleshed out 
yeah in my head but uh if that's what we want to call that i feel like that's what the church is supposed is should function anyway and if i have that is does it look like a building for us right now that we go to on a regular basis right now with a, with some people we know and a ton we don't really like very few people we know and a ton we don't no that doesn't look like that for us no. right now um Dude, so church, what is church let, let, yeah i was gonna say church is a big word right i mean it's a it's a huge word for our in my life for sure like yeah ch- church has been a focal point and a much needed what i thought much needed thing or word uh-huh. in my uh-huh. life i've never yeah. been without it i've never not pursued it i've never uh not had it as but what you people. really are talking about is a corporate gathering on a sunday mixed in with other sort of weekly activities maybe a men's group or a small group that you attend on a regular basis and you say i am a part of this church that's what you really mean that's what i'm that you've always that's had what in i'm your saying life. but i wonder if that's yeah. what my heart has truly desired like right but that's what you've always called church and that's yes. what you've always been a part of yeah correct yeah and correct. most of us that grew up in, that's the same for all of yeah. us that have grown up in the church but i think my definition is changing a little bit and or a lot i think is probably the most accurate thing and it's it's these it's this it's these circles of people who we worship the lord with that are not only my immediate family, but also like a, a really close group of uh, just also really friends and close friends that also we we remind each other of the good news, man, and yeah. that that there's peace and there's healing and there's freedom in the Lord and and I, to have a to have a need outside of that maybe is is I don't feel like it, there's not a big pull for me outside of that right now, and so I'm wondering is this a need that I feel like the world is putting on me to need to go to, or is it yeah. actually a need that the Lord is stirring up inside me that I need to go to? And I feel like one is one I want to do. And one is what I feel like I'm supposed to do. And if that's how you can identify which is which. Does that make sense? It does. <laughs> I guess for me, like the whole finding your sweet spot thing too is, is a freedom word. It's a freedom thing. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm so free right now in my life to, to really be, not just do, but be who I'm, who the Lord's asking me to be or inviting me to be. Yeah. And with that freedom comes kind of a survey of my life of like things that are kind of just wasting my time. And I, I have freedom to say no to those things. And mm-hmm. so what I've, when I'm talking about church right now, I'm talking about all the, like, I'll just be like really transparent. I have zero desire to go to a church, what we call a church right now, because Mm -hmm. I would consider it a waste of my time because all the things that you said are your, are what you're considering your church are things that I still desire. I still desire relationships. I still desire friendships that I can be real with, that I can be honest with, that I can receive honestly Mm -hmm. honesty from and i have that and so again it goes to that place of is that good enough you know Mm. is is what i have in friendships and relationships right now and the influence that i have because you and i talked on the phone the other day about like circles of influence right Mm -hmm. it's it's where you're at Mm -hmm. our you've got a circle i've got a circle and our circles kind of interject at some point you know Mm -hmm. we're sharing influence over certain people. And then you've got some in a circle that I have no access to and I have no mm-hmm. relationship with at all. And is that okay? Is that okay for me in my heart to have what I've got in relationships? And am I able to grow mm-hmm. in this freedom with what I've got? I think in my, in my previous season of life with with the church and with christianity and with the lord i always needed more like my (laughs) my activity in the church needed to grow my um yeah platform needed to grow my influence needed to grow or i didn't feel like i was being effective for the kingdom of god right 
And maybe the more, maybe the more of what you really actually needed is actually the less of what you're actually having now. That's exactly right. Yeah. And, and so I think, I think you're totally right. And I think, I think what I, I would want to say is it's so easy also because here's what I also don't want to be. There's also these people, we all know them and maybe we've all gone through this scene. It's like, Oh, I don't need that organized religion. Right. I don't need, I've got my, and so it's easy to also say, okay, well, we're going to, we have my home family church and I've got these close friends, but if the reality is going to a church, well, there are rhythms and routines that the church does intentionally that I feel like you still need to translate over to your inner circle of family and maybe like your close circle of friends. So like, it's, it'd be so easy to say, Oh, I've got my family and I've got my friends, but then also we never intentionally talk about the things of the Lord. We never intentionally like um, practice what it means to like walk out a, yeah. a, a spirit filled life. And we're just like, Oh yeah, but I've got close friends. Yeah. Well, it's uh, you can still have those close friends and never do anything like intentionally sit and like commune with the Lord with your friends. Mm. You know, you can, so you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. there are, so like the big value of the corporate gathering at a building is that, you know what you're going to, you, you're going to go there for something intentional to do. Mm-hmm. And so what does it look like to, to take those same things? I'm not saying do the exact same things as the church does with your friends, but, it's so easy not to, to, to engage those things because you've got friends and you're just kind of friends and not, does that make sense? So like, sure. Yeah. It's about, it's it's about growth. Would you say like, we want to grow as a person. We want to grow as. It's just about, to me, it's about intentionality and practice. And so when I practice intentionality on uh, recognizing presence, recognizing the, the Lord is important in our lives. Yeah. And so one of the reasons that I had it on my heart to, to just a- ask a couple people, hey, what would you guys think about a morning phone call where we went over one of the Psalms and like yeah. just talked and, yep. well, what was that for? That wasn't just for like to have a neat men's group, whatever. It was for, and I believe now it was for fulfilling that need or that desire frankly that you unless you intentionally do it you won't get at you won't unless you intentionally do it it won't happen because you're not as involved in a local church that does those things intentionally does that make sense it does yeah yeah and i think i think it's important to know and to probably say that there's so many good aspects of the the church and what it's tried to do like there are the its purpose i believe ultimately is to to help you grow in relationship with god right i think that i think that most churches that would be the purpose of it i think it's important for us to i guess the permission that i needed in my life the per, the permission that i feel like i have right now is i don't need all this other stuff to, to receive what I really wanted, which was someone right. to listen and someone that I could pour into, you know? Yeah. And all the extra stuff was just extra stuff that literally filled up my calendar. I mean, I didn't have time to do stuff like podcasting that I love doing. I didn't have time to like do some other things because I was so involved with all that extra stuff that I think the church has ineffectively put into people's lives. Like we don't need another service. We don't need another thing, another class, another this, another that. I think the stripping down thing that I'm, I had a buddy, we we just talked about it uh, on last week's episode that like the, the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis and it literally melts down into a goo before it becomes Mm -hmm. a a butterfly. I think that breaking down thing, I think you, you use the word, uh, minimal minimal stuff or subtraction if we need to experience that at some point like that's why i'm I'm not bagging on people that have all that extra stuff that's fantastic if, if that's how you want to function 
and you, you like the extra stuff, that's great. But if you haven't experienced that minimal first mm -hmm. and actually are received in a place where you, can you honestly say I have a couple people in my life that I can be real with, that I can be honest with, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I think there's a, a large, I don't have facts in front of me. I think there's a large number of people that have all the extra stuff that the church presents, but they don't have the one, two, three people that they can literally grow with. You know what I mean? Because I'm I, not okay yeah. with that in my life. I'm okay with not having all the extra stuff right now for the church, mm -hmm. but I'm not okay with not having somebody in my life that I can grow with and be real with. Yeah. And that you will be real with. So, yeah. because I, I think, I think that I would probably tend to say that I have, I do have several people that I could call and be totally honest with and say, I am struggling with this and I'm sure, but do I do that? Yeah. That's the other question. Yeah. Do I do that? And uh, I would say that I need to do that more. Yeah. Versus do I feel like I could? I feel like I absolutely could with with probably four or five people in my life. Yeah. But do you? It takes effort. Yeah. It takes effort and it takes there's some vulnerability still even there that that for me is just like yeah, that's the point. I think that's the point. It's like, will you do it? Yeah. And then, and then doing it. That's where the, that's where the rubber meets the road as far as the good news, you know, like as far as ministry, as far as really important things in your life is like in those moments where both good things and bad things occur or, you know, yeah. where worries and fears or success happens. It's just like, will you share that? Cause I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's not inherently wrong to have a big ministry. It's not inherently wrong to have, you know, tons of followers or tons of influence, but I would say if you're missing that, that intimate relationship with, with people, again, one, two, three, however many, if you're missing that, there are times that having too much on your plate is going to prevent you from from finding that like it's hard to go small when you're so big it is it's hard mm -hmm. to like cutting away sucks sometimes and like mm -hmm. having that stuff burnt off of your life sucks sometimes i was right. I'm, I'm thankful that in my current season the lord actually asked me to step away and kind of like gave me permission to cut to cut stuff away and it's been a smooth transition like that hasn't always been the case i've experienced some gross stuff too where it was like i wasn't gonna let go so the lord had to yank it and it sucked you know it like ripped it ripped flesh off you know when it, <laughs> yeah and so man if i do but, but i do think the all the lord does desire for us to to want to do that on our own like he's not going to just do that all the time so i think it's important for people to like kind of do an inventory of their life and say man i've got all this i, I go to church three times a week. I've got all these things, extra things, but I'm, I'm missing that. I don't have an intimate relationship. I don't have a close friendship. I, I would say it's, yeah. worth, it's worth going after that. Like it's worth. And is there a good chance, Josh, that there really is that person in their life that oh, yeah. maybe they've overlooked or maybe they just haven't taken the time to, to do these things, like make a phone call. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but you might not have to search that hard <laughs> to find someone. And I'm willing to I'm willing to say that if you're married, it's probably your wife as good. a guy. It's good. Yeah, and is that good enough? You know. Yes. Is that good enough for us? I think. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of married people listening to this conversation right now. I think that that's not good enough. They, they need more, and I would I would challenge that for sure and say it better be good enough. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. that, if, if you're going to say you're married and you're going to say I'm doing this life with you, that better be good enough because there's going to be a time when that's the only person you've got by your side, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I think you can absolutely have more, but not, not go around that, not, sh not shortcut that, that relationship. Yeah. That there's so much opportunity for marriages and um, we can have a whole podcast just on that's my true. thoughts on, 
marriage and your thoughts on stuff like that. But just that, in my opinion, it's got to start there. And sometimes we, we need some encouragement from the outside, but that, like, if that, let's say, um, yeah, let's say I don't have that deep relationship with my wife for whatever reason. And I don't, I maybe can't, don't feel like I can trust her to open up or share my fears or thoughts or anxieties or concerns or cares or hurts or pains or anything like that. Well, sometimes I need a Darren in my life that will actually encourage me to do that. You know, that would encourage point, you know, so it's also really important that we have friends that want to see us have great marriages. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We uh, want to see you thrive and all. I want to see you have a great marriage more than I want to be your best friend. Like I want, you know, more than I want you to come to me. Mm. I want you to see you have a good marriage. I'm going to encourage you to have a good marriage. And and I haven't always been that way with other people even. I, yeah. um, But just the more that I've lived and been married, the longer I've been married that, uh, you're going to find that uh, at the end of the day, that's that's who needs to know and be, you're one with them in every single way. And and I think uh, you, the risk, the chance, it's worth the risk. Yeah. It's worth the risk. Yeah. Um, What's the risk? What do you mean by that? What's worth the risk? It, it's it's worth the risk to, to tell, to, to talk to, to you about your marriage. To, if I see it. Well, I'm saying it's worth the risk for you to open up to your wife. Oh, it's yes. worth the yeah. it's worth the risk to open up to your husband. It's worth the risk yeah. to tell them that you're scared. Like as a as a man, I think sometimes I've fallen into this where it's just like if I can just hold it together mm. and not let her know that I'm worried about our money situation, that's my job is to like be strong and like instead of looking at it as First of all, she probably already can tell that I'm, you know, <laughs> yeah. she's yeah. It's the first of all, I'm not fooling anyone. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> if you um, know, she probably does too, yeah. She knew it before you knew it, buddy. Yeah. And uh <laughs> well, first of all, A she probably already knows. Second of all, um I think we think as men sometimes we have we've got to keep that strength. Well at the very least, I'm not gonna let her worry too. I'm gonna just right. bear it all. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe that was the old way of doing things in the fifties, you know, that, that whole yeah. thing, but it's, is nowadays is uh, our revelation is that it's, we're one and we bear things together and we share, we share concerns, we share dreams. We, we dream together, but we also cry together and we pray about those things together. And I've never, ever, ever regretted sharing my fears or concerns with Macy. And it doesn't mean she's always like super uh, like, <clears throat> oh, it's going to be okay. It sometimes it's like, she's like, yeah, I know. I've been a little worried too. Like, let's enter into that. And it's just amazing that that burden gets spread over the two of you. Wow. And uh, it becomes lighter in that moment. Yeah, it becomes lighter. And we encourage each other. And But, but also, also a lot of the time it's like, when I'm discouraged, she's got a ton of faith for something yeah. and uh, vice versa. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's, it's not, it's both, it's both. And so there's just, I'm so grateful for, for her. And it's, it's usually a lot of times it's not, can, do I think I can tell her it's do, will I, right? you know, mm-hmm. will I, and uh, will I open up? I, we talked to a lot of people especially with marriage is just like, um, uh, will I open up? Will I open up with her? Will, will the risk is she's going to see that I'm scared, worried, have fear. Mm. And really a lot of our wives just want to share in it with us. They just, they just want it all. They want all of it. They don't, it's, we don't need to censor our, they just want it. We don't need to have the answers. They, you, me sharing and opening up is the answer. They want to share the life. Yeah. I've been in those places where I've, I've shared things with friends before I've shared it with my wife or I've opened up to friends before I've opened up to the person that's right next to me. And it hurts them. I've seen it hurt her. Mm -hmm. And I instantly thought it was more of a, 
like a jealousy thing, but it wasn't, it was what you said. It's like, she's Damn literally man. saying, if you, you don't get it, Darren, if you're hurt, I want to be hurt with you. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's almost this thing of like, why are you hurt? And I'm not, that doesn't make sense. And so I do think mm -hmm. there's something beautiful about that. And I think it's more, more about wives probably than it is husbands that feel that way, but they, they're really good at wanting to take on that stuff with their man. I really do believe that. Yeah. And, and they're not perfect either. And they may blow it and they may try to fix it and they may try to answer. And really all you wanted was just, they're not perfect, but that's the big risk. The risk is that um, you've got to take that chance. Yeah. And then, and then, and then maybe you can be proactive and you can say, Hey, I, I'm afraid and be honest with them and say, I'm honestly, I'm afraid to like talk to this about you talk to you about this um and i don't necessarily want you to fix it or feel like you have an answer because i feel like it's a complicated situation at work or yeah. with an employee or yeah but so if, and but this is what's going on and i'm a little nervous and and then you communicate that does that make sense it does and, yeah. and you communicate that and well let's 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 be let's be open and honest and proactive about how you're feeling yeah that's good yeah yeah i think i see a lot of guys that yeah. i see a lot of guys that it's it's um well that's my work stuff you know that stuff at work and i don't want to i don't want to bother her with that and yeah. or she doesn't she's not going to have an answer for me for that or maybe she is going to have an answer for me for that and i don't want to share it and yeah. and i i would say well yeah <laughs> maybe so and ladies like be sensitive to that yeah. but the whole idea is like uh i i want to i like to encourage guys yeah you should tell her talk to your wife about it bring her into your life marriage is a sh i like to define it as a shared life mm. marriage is a shared life and if you're leaving your work life at work you're not having a shared life you're only sharing half of your life with your wife wow you know um and so I can see how that would, that could completely transform a marriage. I think that, that simple thing. Cause like there's plenty of guys that I've, I've been there too. Of like, I had a stressful day at work. I'm going to leave that there. I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to try to come yeah. home and be something different than I really am. <laughs> you know, I'm really stressed. I'm really worried. I'm really whatever, but I'm going to showcase my strength right now and not be that. No, I think, yeah. I think that's cool, man. Like, don't. and maybe part of the reason is because we've we've experienced i've been real and it it hasn't mm -hmm. been so fun but i think again almost embracing that awkwardness of what that's going to be like if you get past that a couple times <laughs> you know yeah you do that a couple times i think the third fourth fifth time are going to be so much easier to just come home be real you know yeah if we can't be real at home, where can we be real at? You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. And it, it's a work in progress and they give, let's give our wives yeah. grace and say, and, and because they love us, they might want to have the answer for what you should tell your boss and fix it. And, yeah. and maybe you don't need that. And maybe you don't want that. And maybe you just want to make, but so like, maybe it just it takes practice for both sides, you for know, sure. like, yeah. And let's not l blow our top whenever they don't respond perfectly like we want them to. But, but let's not put walls up and stop sharing. Let's not, let's not give it up. Let's not stop. Yeah. Let's keep putting that ball in their court. Let's keep sharing our life. Yeah. And maybe just say like, listen, all I really want is a hug. Mm. And for you to hear, understand where I'm coming from. Yeah. And because I need to unload this burden and I know that you love me and I love you and I want to share it with you because I love you and I know that you love me. Uh, and that's all, that's all I need. That's good. Or, and it could be like, Hey, what, what do you feel like I should do with this? Like, and then it's not, so it can be like, these are your biggest, theoretically, the, the people that love you the most. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> you know, and want the best for you and your family. That's good. There's not a wife I, I know about that doesn't want the best for her husband and yeah. his job, his career. Yeah. Um, and so just like recognizing that that's probably the motivation 
but we're just not all we don't have a ton of practice at responding correctly yet and yeah there's a lot of people that probably have spent 20 years of witnessing their husband have literally two lives right their life at work life at home and it's kind of sucked like not getting their full yeah. husband you know i think and it, it's it's and, and when let's talk about wives at work maybe yeah true yeah do is it the same both ways and you know do i make time to hear what happened in her day and care about it and and you know it's it's both sides it just yeah. kind of like for the sake of our discussion for sure talking yeah. about why husbands at work but it's both sides yeah uh, of course yeah there's responsibility to talk and there's responsibility to listen i think for for both, both yeah sides. and it's just you got to make time for it mm -hmm. you have got to because with the kids and the schedules and the sports and or even if you don't have that there's you can check out with the netflix show together and yeah. So with people that like, let's say that I'm going to be a person that practices this stuff right here with my wife and I practice doing things a little bit different, right? Giving her part of the burden, giving her part of the, like unloading on her and trusting her to be able to deal with this stuff with me. Communicating with her. Yeah. yeah that. Communicating mm -hmm. better with her. I, I can see how that would so affect the marriage in a, in a positive way. Why then would I need other people also to, to have in my circle? Why would I need a, a Josh Little John also to communicate with if I'm growing and talking with my wife? Um, well, I think it's just, it's not always just about need. Like, like, it's not just always about like need. It's like, oh, I need, I've got this awesome relationship with my wife now and we're really open together. So is it less about need and is it more just about like, this is, this is what life is. It's fruitfulness. It's, I also want to share life with this person. It's here. friendships. Yeah. It's, and it's maybe me being there for someone else, not just them for me all the time. And so it's, it's, uh, um, and we're going to, we're going to have ups and downs. And so it's just, you have this network of close friends that it's just, when 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 you're here i'm here and you know and now that we've got kids you you're you're gonna want another dad's perspective right it's oh, good now that you're in business you're like hey i need some and so it's 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 i need some hey wisdom on i've got this business idea this you know what would you do i'm thinking about a career change would you guys be praying for me or how you know like yeah it's it's the uh, it's just that there's there's so much opportunity I think the base is that you, let's start with our marriage and let's start with what it means to share a life together. But, but then living that, this life with people, the, the thing, the, the, the coolest thing and the, the thing that makes the Christian religion and Christianity and this life spirit filled life so different from anything else is that we can actually have people in our lives that aren't our family that love us deeply. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and that we can love deep, deeply. That's good. Yeah. Right. There's there. It's these aren't worldly based relationships. These aren't family. We're not blood. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and life can be tough and we're going to need and people are going to need us. That's good. To, to get them through, to give them wisdom, to get prayer. Man, I had a dream man, I, I know you told me to pray about y'all, y'all's move coming up and yeah. I had a dream. And if you don't have those people in your life, you don't have to be your best friend that you're going to do a guy's hunting trip with every weekend at the expense of your family or, or you're, you're opening up your, to him more than your own wife or, you know, like, yeah. I'm just saying like, this is not about need necessarily. This is about Mm. This is the cool thing about it. This is yeah. the cool thing about this life. Yeah. We can have friends that aren't just work friends. These people, something happened to my son or daughter, they'd, they'd be at my door and like asking how they could help. Or if I am in a bind and I need a job change, they're going to give me referrals and give me advice and wisdom and hook yeah. me up with it. So it's, it's, it's not about need in, in that sense. It's like, uh, let's have that. Let's do have that, but it's so much bigger and more fun than that. Yeah, that's good.
That's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. Right. And that seems worth worth going after. And when I say going after, I don't mean like striving and looking. I mean like being intentional with with the yeah. with the influence that you have right now. Being intentional, it's a, it's it, it's worth investing in that. It's worth going after above man. above really above all else. Like mm -hmm. if relationships are really that important. And maybe I'm just speaking right now to that, that one person that feels like if they didn't go to church, they'd be isolated or they wouldn't have, you know, this avenue to, to be around people. I would question whether or not you're really being real and vulnerable and open and sharing life with the majority of those people anyway. And that mm -hmm. you maybe have permission to, to look a little slimmer, <laughs> you know, and like, uh, yeah, and let's let the church off the hook a little bit. I mean, these 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 meetings and the size of these meetings and and the format of the meetings where it's sort of like everything's sort of like there's there's usually one or two people you know speaking and everyone else is like sort of passively receiving a message or a prayer. It's not know, real conducive up. to like sparking yeah, up. Yeah, it's just really but, not. And then yeah. we're we're you know we're in we get there a little bit before after and so it's just not it's not really in my opinion just designed for that I'm, the things i'm talking about are the the random phone calls at 2 p.m on a wednesday that you're gonna make you're gonna like get i'm gonna intentionally try to get to know somebody better yeah and uh and maybe put someone else before you maybe maybe let seek someone out to get to know them before you're just seeking someone out that you can dump on like Good. yeah you know let's let's be leaders in this you know let's 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 lead let's lead knowing that if you don't have that probably hardly anyone else does either and let's let's be leaders in it let's let's go after what you want by leading it and so it's i just don't see the meeting what we we see in american church meetings conducive for anything like that but let's not try to make it something that it's not really built for if that that's makes good. sense that's really good yeah and it's part of the reason that maybe in the season i'm like i'm not really attracted to that right now so it's yeah that's the that's the point and um good let's leave yeah. with that that's good no i think that's we, we talked about that earlier too about the the whole bait and switch thing of like don't you know <laughs> I'm, I'm not interested in things that are not what they're meant to be. You know, they're not meant to, yeah. what, what I'm, if what I'm desiring is real close relationship with stuff, the, the Sunday morning, as I see it right now is just, it's not as needed <laughs> for what I'm looking for. And that's, that's where I'm at. And I've got, mm. I've got what I need. I think that's something too, that we, you know, the Lord promises that you'll have what you need for the road. You know, you'll have what you need for the journey. And I've got that. I've got, I've got enough friends mm. that I can grow with, that I can pour into. And if the Lord brings somebody else in my life that I can build up and encourage, I want to be able to do that without having funky other things on my mind that are a waste of time. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's good. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just so worth it. These, these friendships, the Jesus telling the disciples and John said, you're going to know, people are going to know that you're my followers because of your love for one another. Yeah. And I think a lot of people would look at the world and be like, these Christians can't even get along. Like, but it's not true. Like I actually do have relationships where nothing on paper says that we should love one another and yeah. I should, lay down my family's life and my life to go help you out and vice versa. Yeah. But it is, it is true. I do have relationships that like that and chances are you do too. Yeah. That's good. And I think, and, and there's a promise that I think that you can have that, it, but not without some sort of intentionality and effort. That's like right. it, 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 it's, it's, it's a lot easier not to call you than it is to call you. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's true. And, and, yeah, and some days I need I'm calling you because I need to talk. Yeah, and some days I'm calling you because I I want to hear what you have to say, and 
see how things are going in your life. And so it's. And I think like for me, when that becomes how I know that is uh, beneficial or worth, worth having is when I realize that it's good enough. And that's, I'm just in that really cool season. Like, is this good enough? You know, is, is, is my relationship with Josh Little John, is it, is it enough? It is. I'm going to answer that call. Or I'm so enough call, for what? What do you mean? Him. When you say that good enough, enough for what? Dude, that's where, that's where I ruined a lot of, I, I missed out on some, I think, really good opportunities to have some closer friendships because they weren't, those moments weren't enough for me. Like me personally, I needed a bigger platform. I needed well, a bigger, You had for a ministry ambition. I did. You had ministry ambition. Mm -hmm. And um, so, okay, I get that. I think, I think for me, I'm just, these days, I, I'm just looking for simplicity. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's just it's simple. Yeah. I know who the Lord is. I know that I now want to have God-based loving relationships mm -hmm. with my wife and my children yeah. and a close group of friends who at the end of the day, what binds us is our love from one another based on what God's done for us. That's good. And is that church? Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It is. And we gather on the phone. We gather in person. We gather in the living room. We gather over meals. We gather when we're visiting each other yeah. in different cities. Yeah. It maybe looks a little different. Um, but I, I, I would say probably I've never been more satisfied. So good. And that's how the life. church is connected. The, like you and I are connected by our love for each other, not by, you know. Our love for each not, other. Not by proximity, not by, not even by time or by phone call. It is by the love for each other. And that's. Um, I want, I want people to believe that that's worth it, that that's worth going after finding. I don't even like the word finding, like realizing, I think is more like it. Well, like, and there's people, yeah. I know there's people right now that maybe, maybe listening, maybe not is that they're like, ah, it's easy for you guys to say, I don't feel like anyone loves me. I feel like my family doesn't even love me. I feel like I'm completely alone. Um, and, and that's tough. And I would want to say like, yeah, that's, that sucks. Sometimes we have to be the first one and That's true. we've got to, we've got to be the first one. And I've never received love like that, but have I ever given it either? You know, I've never, I've never had somebody listen to my heart before, but have I ever shared my heart? You know, have I ever made that? A yeah. Hey, to, they might say, I don't, I want. how can I give love from an empty vessel? I'm empty. Yeah. How can I give love? And I, it's like, well, it's not, it's not your love. It's the love. It's God's love through you. That's good. And um, and and then and then prayer and just saying like God and and request that like yeah. God, I'm I need someone in my life who loves me for me exactly the way I am, and maybe I need that for I need to look. I need to that first. I need to be that for someone else first. Yeah. Can you intersect somebody in my life that can be with that? And, and I don't have the love or the energy to do it, but I know that you can give it to me and give it through me to do that. That's good. That's good. Because I know that you designed me not to be alone. It's not good that man, God made Adam, God, the other things, God, God made, God walked with Adam in the garden alone and, and, and Adam was unsatisfied. Yeah. He was alone. Yeah. I don't know if he knew he was alone or I don't know if he knew he was unsatisfied, but God said, this is not good that he's alone. Yeah. You're missing something. Yeah. He needs somebody that looks like him. And, you know, in my opinion, this isn't, but it's just like, there, maybe there was something about the Lord that although we're made in his image, there was just something a little bit too different that made it mm. uh, not relational. There was, you know, that, that, that at the end of the day, man still needed someone that looked like him, that he was compatible with, that he could um, experience life on earth with, you know? And, and so I, it's that important. So whenever I hear people say, well, all I need is God, 
Uh, I'm like, well, not according to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's all good. I need is God, and yeah, so it's good, mm-hmm. bro. This has been good. Important. This is good. I appreciate your your expertise on relationships. Thank you for that. <laughs> you see this? I a don't lot. have a lot of them, but I don't have a lot of them, but I have a couple good ones. You do hear. <laughs> you do hear. Through safe time, a lot of probably uh, emptiness and some people that may be unfulfilled in, in, in the re- relationship area of their life, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, loneliness is probably a big, a big thing, I would imagine, that you're hearing. Oh, man. And, and, and you can even be lonely and you're involved in a million things. Yeah. You're, and you see people all the time. Yeah. And you're at, every, you're at every work event and every church event. And, it's true. Uh, these this haunting feeling that if i'm going there if i stop showing up mm. how many phone calls would i get that week checking in to see where i'm at how what what's at the heart of this yeah is it really do i am i known at all and seen at all valued at all and uh this is probably where i tend to disagree with maybe churches or something that would say like well it's not about you it's you need to lay that down like uh Mm. and and i think that's a half half truth i feel like there there is i feel like people are designed to be loved and be seen be known and deserve it and be loved and in the flesh not just uh, by by other humans so what's your What's your advice or wisdom for that person that's that's using that kind of language with you about feeling lonely and you know that they've they're involved in a whole bunch of things and a whole bunch of people but they still feel alone? What's your what's your wisdom for that? And I'm sure it's been, oh, man. case by case. I'm sure is different, but in general, what what would you suggest? That, what what's the next step for that person? Yeah. Oh. I think first we, Nancy and I, with our ministry, our heart for our ministry is like, we don't start with the answer for sure. Yeah. We start with the, uh, we start with the bearing of the burdens and walking alongside of them and saying, we get it. Yeah. And let's, let's start there and let's, let's just recognize that fact. And that's let's pro- not that's just- probably the next step, right? That's probably the first step is getting that out there to someone. <laughs> right. So like, or like just walking into that realization they're they're what they're waking up to this this fact yeah and you're you're there alongside that you're there with them and going yeah okay. yep <laughs> like and it's hard this is hard um this is like finding out you have cancer i'm not saying it's like I'm, this is probably a horrible analogy like <laughs> hopefully nobody get gets yeah. pissed off about that but i just saying like this is like this isn't the prescription part of the phase this is the going oh and so whenever you find let's say you get a bad di- report bad diagnosis you don't just it's this is the part where where we're we're entering into that with you and so i would encourage you as a friend if that's somebody in your life you don't you don't instantly try to like fix that mm-hmm. i think you we recognize that's hard that would be hard that is hard um and so uh, and and we pray and we ask the lord for wisdom and we say like god what what are you saying right now what's your what's your answer to this like what what do you say about this and so for us it's not that easy it sounds like it should be easy should i should have a abc right now like a step one two three for that for you but I think the first step is admitting it. The first step is confessing it. Yeah. The first step is maybe bringing, shedding light on that subject. And maybe that's just pulling somebody aside that is in your life mm. and saying, and, and let's get this out in the open. I feel lonely. I feel like I, I feel like if, if I stopped showing up here, I wouldn't really have any friendships that, existed outside of me being coming here yeah and frankly i'm not even sure if anybody would bother to 
reach out to me and frankly i'm not sure how good of i and if you're really honest you might say i haven't done that frankly either. i'm not frankly yeah i'm like I, i'm wondering how close i am and and to anybody else here either and then that gives an opportunity for truth to come in because it may be the fact that you're mistaken and it may be the fact that it's a lie and it just feels that way. And you need to confess that thing. So somebody can go, Oh my God, that's not, let me show you why that's not true at all. A, a B, C, D, and E, or that may just need to be brought to light to go. Yeah. Oh man, I feel that too. I didn't know anyone else felt like that, Yeah. but I feel that too. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, or it, it's just, it starts with con everything to, to me, to us, it starts with that confession. Yeah. Because until that can be brought to the light, we don't know the solution to that because that could be true. That could be not true. That could be the same for the person you just shared it with, but it starts with their, and nothing. I don't feel like anything can happen unless it, it's dag It's seen. It's yeah. just sort of like with the medical analogy, it's just like we can't operate on cancer unless we know cancer is there. Um, That's good. Uh, so it starts with that. So it's not, I don't have a quick. I love that. I think that's. I don't have a. I think that's, that's the key because there's two different sides to a relationship. There's the person that has the, in that relationship or in that situation, there's a person that has the issue or has the thing that comes to someone else for advice or for help. And I think I basically asked you, what do you tell the person who needs the help? And I think you kind of gave us uh, instruction on how you handle that because step one should be for us receiving to not have all the answers and to, to not even think that you have the answers. Because yeah. if, we're, if we're really wanting to like give Christian love to someone, that's not a love that comes with all the answers. It's a love that, that knows someone who can lead us into all truth, right? Mm -hmm. and so helping lead that person into all truth is, is really all we can do. And I think that's what ultimately in that, that phone call that we had last week where you kind of said I was uh, shining in that moment was me practicing that. Like, I don't have the answers. Mm -mm. I do know a truth and it, it's a truth that's strong that we can have peace. We can mm -hmm. lean on that. Let's figure the rest of it out together. Like, let's do this together. I am choosing to be with you in this. And, uh, and, and be willing to, here's the other thing is like the thing about having to ha have an answer is like, we're almost saying like, let me solve this as quickly as possible. So I can move on to the next person. Ah. So I can, so we can be whatever. So like, I could Google, we could get on Amazon right now and I could find you 10 Christian books on like what to do when you're feeling lonely. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I could easily be like, Oh, this book, you should totally read this. Take that a little bit further. I could have like 10 verses mm -hmm. that lined up for you. Like, go, oh, man, these are some ones that I meditate on. Like when you're feeling lonely and guess what? They're all about like, God is, well, you know what, brother, God's, how could you be lonely? God's with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never and, leave uh, you or forsake you, right? 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 Right. But Adam, it was not good that he was lonely, but, it's, you know, yep. but you're supposed to be okay with it. And so, um, <laughs> oh. and, 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 and so to me, and we talk, I know we've talked about it a little before, but this is, this goes into discipleship a little bit. Mm. And I, I call discipleship friendship. I, I think it's, um, maybe it always meant that way but i feel like in this day and age it's, it's friendship and um and friendship implies like time like i'm gonna walk with you yeah through this and even the way we say that is like i'm gonna like lead you to the answer it's not even really that i'm gonna walk with you in this and just walk we're gonna walk together yeah and because you opened up your heart to me i'm gonna open up my heart to you that's good and um however long that takes I just think it's just everything, everything starts with though is, is honesty. Like you said, honesty and confession. Yeah. With the people that you're in, in, in your life. <laughs> so, so the person that's 
listening to this or in your life that that is involved in a lot of stuff but feels at the end of the day feels lonely i don't feel like i have anybody that loves me well it starts with confession and well who too well with those people that you're around yeah and um it's important yeah it's important it's good man I, yeah feeling like you don't have the answer i love that po- posture it's a posture of humility not not, yes. not disbelieving that you have the answer yeah and oh this person and and not believing that because this person shared with you is oh i must have the answer or else they wouldn't have asked me <laughs> well i think what i think one thing that's good to know as a as a christian as a born again believer is that god does have the answer i think where where i've gone wrong and where a lot of christians go wrong is they think that means that i also have the answer and it doesn't uh-huh. so if this is a real journey like really leading someone to the lord is we you know we, we've taken that as stand on the street corner and make them ask jesus into their heart you know but leading someone to the lord is literally like hey, i don't have the answers here he does though let's let's go together let's Let's go to him yeah. together and, and, and help you find not even the final answer, but help you find your next step. You know, am I okay with that? Like this may take time, this journey with you, this relationship with you might not be for the, the end zone or might not be for that finish line. It might be for the next step, you know, like you walking with is the answer. Yes. Yes. That's good. Yep. And I have, and I have that, I have the ability to take the next step with someone. Of course. Yeah. That's good. And, and and seem, and then your times where it can seem like, or like, is this doing any good? Right. Uh, do I, am I seeing any progress in them? Yeah. Are they straight? And so there's a big, (laughs) happy. Yeah. But man, well, I think another thing, we, revelation we've had for doing these safe times for over a year, about a year and a half, is that it's trusting that the Lord is working mm. and the Holy Spirit is in his timing is, is working. And our job is just to show up. Our job is to encourage and pray and listen and understand and love and, uh, it, and regardless of what we can see. Yeah. Um, as long as we are showing up and speaking truth and love and that's it. We, we let go of the results. So we let go of the outcome that we think that need to happen. And, uh, it's all, it still goes back to some humility there. You know, we, (laughs) and so it's, it's just because there's a couple things, it's humility, but it's also, discouraged <laughs> you're, you're what you you'll get discouraged yes yeah. if people are for hurdles yeah your hoops your benchmarks yeah of what you think they should be by when yeah uh so not only don't you know what should happen and what needs to happen you also will get discouraged because it's not happening so there's a couple of good reasons well and i think that again we're going there we're talking about like looking too far ahead, not being present enough. You know, like if I'm, if I'm uh-huh. always looking at the finish line, you know, this, this race becomes an eternity, you know, if I'm always looking at the finish line and I may not experience that finish line with that person, you know, no, we, we've right. talked about that before too, about seasons. seasonal friendships, man. And it's, yes. Again, is this okay right now? What I have, is this good enough yeah. for right now? Is this okay? If it is, live in it because guess what you're going to have different friends a year from now (laughs) five years from now somebody else that's going to help you come to the next step in your life you know i didn't have friends my whole life that could help me generate wealth or that could give Uh me business ideas it wasn't until the last year and a half that the lord brought people into my life that could help me understand money and understand business and i've got to be okay with that man you know, totally. I've, got to, I've got to be okay with my right now with what's going on. Mm-hmm. I'm, it's I'm true. Okay, and I'm okay with having, I think maybe it's, it's okay to have your eyes on the prize, but your heart's got to be right now. Like your heart's got to be present. You know what I mean? You can see the, you um, can see the finish line, but have your heart in the race right now. There's so 
truth what you just said the just being present in the day to day in in today in now it it covers a multitude of anxieties and worries tell me how you can have regret or shame or anxiety or worry or fear if you're in the present yeah sure. it's just really hard yeah it's just really hard it's good um and it's just it's it's a key to everything it is really a key to everything i i find for sure in my life um if i'm in guilt or aim or fear or anxiety mm -hmm. i'm either looking in the past yeah. forward or backwards man it's good and we just don't know we just don't know good and there's so much freedom in that there is yeah bro this has been awesome i appreciate you i value well, that's I've, good i've always valued your thoughts you're a thinker i appreciate the I just appreciate you, man. Yeah. Well, I want to congratulate you, man. This is, yeah. uh, you've done 75 episodes. 75 episodes. Man. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I remember when, I remember when you were like, you didn't even know how to operate a computer and you were like yeah. telling me you were going to do a podcast and now yeah. look at you. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank Very you, cool. Man. I appreciate it. You've been the, uh, the biggest guest too. I've had you on more times than anybody. So thank you for <laughs> sharing. You've shared in this, bro. I'm always willing to <laughs> fill in. I'm always willing. I love you, yeah. dude. Love your family. Bless you guys. Uh, All right. Thanks. Love you too, man. All right, buddy. Thanks See for you. having me on. It's an honor.